We're running a little late, a couple of minutes, uh, by my watch and by my phone. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to ask um, Representative Jackson if he had opened us with prayer. As we come before you this morning, we thank you for this day, Lord, for this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Lord God, for your leading and your guiding by your spirit. So we just ask you for wisdom now as we do the business of the state of Georgia so that the people of Georgia can realize that you are with us, Father. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Thank you, sir. Oh, wait, we got four on the wall now. We got three on the wall now. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> Chair, Chairman Bateman, are you on the wall or are you going to present your bill from the floor or where you're sitting? Which bill is that? Okay, well, go ahead and present it. Yes, if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, here to ask for House Bill 757 as it relates to um, elections. The uh, General parts of the bill, as asked by the Secretary of State's office, are in the first five sections, and they relate to um, registration regarding runoffs in certain cases, um, complying with our federal elections, and, um, and also it, it codifies authority that is historically designated to the Secretary of State's office to set qualifying um, regarding our our special elections. Um, the section six relates to primaries in special elections and would, would add the primary process in certain instances. Um, in appointed positions, certain statewide elections, and um, it, it also provides that in um, it would only happen in the instance that you had a uh, two candidates running, and then it would also overlap what what's going on regarding the uh, those general elections in that same year. Um, and then in section seven, it would add a primary, uh, a special primary primary in regards to state house and senate elections. Um, it does that in a a window um, outside of the session um, otherwise you would still have those elections that would would run in a special election fashion the way they do today be happy to answer any questions anyone have any questions uh representative hugley do you have your button pushed oh, okay uh, yeah. representative beverly yeah thank thank okay. mr chair the um I just, just for a, a point of clarification, I, we don't have this on our sheet or in the book. It's in the book? Okay, we just, I just didn't get a copy, so if I can get it. It's on a yellow sheet. It's on a yellow sheet, okay. All right. I don't, okay. Anyone have any questions? Okay, don't see any questions. Y'all have a chance to take a look at that bill. Uh, all right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members Representative Senate. Bonner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, here today to present House Bill 487. It is the second one down on your blue sheet. The uh, Disaster Volunteer Relief Act um, essentially provides 14 days, up to, up to 15 days paid leave for a state employee who is also a member of the Civil Air Patrol. This is the same um, courtesy we extend to members of the of state government that are also uh, volunteers with the Red Cross. 
This uh, allows them to volunteer for disaster relief for a named, a declared disaster in Georgia or one of the adjoining states that we've got an agreement with, and they can only do that with the approval of their immediate supervisor and their department. So we're, we're looking at for a governor declared disaster? A, uh, that's, that's correct, Mr. Chairman, a named declared disaster in the state of Georgia. Okay, and it can only occur at the approval of the department? That is correct. They can only be released at the, uh, with the approval of their department. Okay. Any questions from anybody on the committee? The Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm reading from the blue sheet. I haven't read the bill, so it may be in there, but if there have been instances, and I'm looking at the language, nothing says shell, and I'm, I'm looking at the language. We've passed bills. One's going to be back on the floor and people chose to ignore them because they did not say shell. And it's, you know, all supervisors are not the greatest people in the world. And I, I'm, I'm just, because I've seen it happen so much with our military bills for, for licensure, everybody chose to ignore them in spite of what the legislature did because the word shell was not in there. Uh, understand. Uh, while we you know, would certainly hope that uh, certain state agencies would release folks, we, we don't want to run into a situation where there may be a, a vital need within that state agency in terms of disaster response that they could not afford that personnel to go and do Civil Air Patrol work. So it's certainly a balancing situation, but um, it, at the moment it is a relatively small population that this would impact. So we're, we're certainly hopeful that the agencies will do the right thing. Thank you. Chairman Knight. Chairman Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and again to my friend, uh, maybe a follow-up on, on Representative Williams' question. What I'm hearing, and I think this is what you're, you're, you're saying, is, is that it's permissive so that if that state employee is in a position, no matter where he is in state government, he or she is in state government, that if the need is greater in Georgia, it, it gives that flexibility because they still are an employee of the state of Georgia and, and, and so it gives the flexibility, and, uh, if you will. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. So as a, as, as an, by way of example, there may, during a, a uh, disaster here in Georgia, there may be a member of the Civil Air Patrol that actually works for a state agency that is also assisting in disaster relief. And so it would be up to that, that agency and that particular department head whether or not that particular employee is best served in the position they're in as a state employee, or perhaps they may be, have a greater impact uh, to the state as a member of the Civil Air Patrol in that function. Thank you for your clarification. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing no more questions, thank you, sir. Thank you. Representative Parko. You, uh, hold, hold on one second. Yes, sir. I, I have committed a cardinal sin almost. Chairman Newton. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 789, the third one down under modified structure, a surprise bill, a transparency only disclosure bill. Uh, He's presented this before. Anybody have any questions? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Perkle, sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, HB 780 is the first one on your sheet. Um, each year, we annually do an easement and conveyance with state properties. Uh, for instance, we will have a new technical school, perhaps, in your district uh, that, is, uh, that needs uh, power uh, run to the new facility. And we will grant an easement to, say, for example, Georgia Power that will allow them to lay a transmission line on state properties that goes to state properties. The present law, uh, as it, as it uh, stands, if we grant an easement to a private company, we must have an appraisal of the value, and we'll see a lot. We'll do 10, 20, 30, depending on what the year is. Uh, and we see a lot of $10 evaluations, and we'll spend $3,000 on a $10 evaluation. Uh, this particular bill, there's seven words in it, 
uh, if it, it, will, it will apply only with the, the sole and direct benefit of the state. So um, if it solely and directly benefits the state, we can waive that appraisal requirement and um, save taxpayers a little money for um, not forking out $3,000 for a $10 valuation. So good government. Any questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, thanks, sir. Thank you. Representative Carpenter. Thank you, Chairman. Committee, I'm coming before you, House Bill 555. I came uh, yesterday as well. It just basically moves defects caseworkers into the probate court and, and removes them from magistrate court if they're getting if warrants are getting issued while doing the uh, their line of duty. Simple bill, and uh, it allows them to do their job without the fear of uh, non-evidential uh, warrants being issued. Uh, it looks like you have a question. Uh Chairman of Station. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Representative Carpenter. My question is, and you and I had a chance to briefly speak about this, but if it's a contempt of court order, like a defects case workers failed to show up to court in juvenile court, uh, would that be included in this if there was uh, an order for that? Work, case worker to be brought in to appear before the judge or do whatever the judge yeah I don't, I don't believe it would and is there a specific situation where a judge an, another judge has issued an order uh, a juvenile court judge or some other judge has issued an order for a defects case worker that brought this uh, bill about so, so yeah so what we had in in uh, the fall of 18 up in Whitfield County is we had two case workers that were called to a scene by police by police to evaluate a situation, and they did that in front of the police, of course, and they ended up removing the children. And then uh, a month later, the estranged uh, mother and her boyfriend went to magistrate court and had issued a warrant saying that they did all kinds of things. And then magistrate just, of course, had no opportunity to, to research it. They just issued those warrants and then had to deal with it. And so the defects worker has to pay to miss work, has to pay for representation out of their own pocket. So they're just asking that they would give a little bit more uh, judgment before those warrants are issued. So. Um, see no more questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Does anyone on the floor have a bill that they like to request? Okay, seeing none. All right, we'll set the calendar for tomorrow, uh, which happens to be Friday, which happens to be the day we all go home. And I really hope we could start at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, but I don't know. Um, y'all just keep, keep track. Oh, by the way, uh, how many notices do y'all get if, that we're going to have a rules meeting? Three, Not, are you counting the one that I get up on the house floor and say four? Uh, why is it we continue to get calls saying, are we having rules meeting tomorrow? Okay, just 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 wonder, just wonder. Okay, uh, modif under modified structure, House Bill 487. We got a move and a second. And, uh, all in favor say aye. All opposed like sign, thank you. That's on. House Bill under modified open, House Bill 780. I hear a moving a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. Thank you all. That's the calendar for tomorrow.